Tintin is a very popular graphic novel created by George Remy, pen name Bourget. May he rest in peace. It's been translated in a lot of languages and sold over 270 copies. The series follows the adventures of a lovable young reporter named Tintin with his dog, Milo, on some countries, Snowy. It went on to have TV shows, films, a radio drama, and even some theater productions, but we won't be talking about any of that in this video. Recently, I've been rereading the Tintin comics, so I wanted to make a video about what I thought of them after the reread. So, let's begin. 1. The Realism The thing with Tintin is that it doesn't take place in a fantasy world, it takes place in a real world. For example, almost every car in Tintin is inspired by a real car you can actually buy. Not just cars, places too. Tintin has many inspirations from Belgium, Brussels. Tintin's apartment is located on 26 Labrador Road, which isn't a real place, but it was inspired by the Terry Newab Street of Brussels. And also in The Secret of the Unicorn, where the story begins, inspired by the Place du G de Bailey. I'll stop there with all the Brussels inspirations. Trust me, I can make a whole video on all the inspirations Tintin has from Brussels. I feel like these additions made this series feel a bit more realistic. 2. The Characters This comic is packed with memorable characters, so obviously I won't be able to cover every single one of them. So, let's begin. Tintin is a great protagonist. He knows how to get out of almost every situation and has his amazing moments. One thing that always bugs me about him is that he commonly gets knocked out and or captured. I guess on one hand you could say this shows how Tintin isn't a perfect character, but on the other it kind of gets repetitive seeing him get a concussion for the 26th time. But nevertheless an amazing protagonist. Sometimes characters just evolve because it makes sense in the story. Snowy or Milo. You know, for the rest of this video I will just call him the dog. Anyways, in all the novels, the dog would talk and give Tintin some help on the situation he is in. But after how it kinda took most of that role, it became more of a comic relief character, like giving an end or commentary on the situation. Although, still helping out. About Captain Haddock. Now, you can't talk about this character without mentioning his whiskey addiction. In Crime with the Golden Claws, when he gets stranded in the desert, he has mirages of whiskey and gets mad later when someone shoots at his bottle of whiskey. I know it sounds a bit like I'm complaining, but I honestly can't imagine this character without his whiskey addiction. Besides that, he has a great backstory about how his ancestor is a pirate and usually gets into fights easily. He even makes up his own catchphrases. I know Tintin has a couple of catchphrases, but Haddock has way more. So much that I found a list of them. Go check it out. It's linked in the description. The Thompsons, that is sometimes spelled like this and sometimes spelled like this. They have these substandard police officers. These characters are usually known as, yet again, more of a comic relief character. They are not used to this as they do usually arrest the villain at the end. One thing I noticed recently is that these characters are not identical, and there is one visual way to tell them apart. Thompson's mustache is curved while Thompson's is straight. I feel like these characters are fun. Their humor kind of reminded me of a Charlie Chaplin silent film. I did find myself laughing at almost every joke. This perfectly brings me to my next part, the humor. I want to introduce this part quickly. This part is going to be pretty short, as I don't want to spoil too many jokes. Alright then, let's begin. The humor in Tintin is actually pretty good. There are some great jokes, like for example, a detective giving every dog in the city hoping one will be his to Tintin, or the Thompsons getting a flight from someone who's never flown. There's a lot of great comedy moments. Like I said, I don't want to spoil all of them here, so just go read the comic. I'm not going to surprise anyone when I say this, but I like this series. If, if after this video you plan on reading this series, then one thing you should keep in mind is that these were written decades ago, so not everything is going to hold up well in this day and age. If you don't have time to read all 24 issues, but still want something with Tintin, check out the 2011 Steven Spielberg movie. Well, um, goodbye, and I will see you next time.